Hello, everyone. I, let me start that over again. So formal. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Josh Lawyer. I'm Sergio Lopez. And this is Waiting to Dry. Yay. Yeah. Uh, yay. Uh, also, today we have a guest, our first guest. Yay. The gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous. <justices. laughs> uh, super talented person who has an amazing love story <laughs> she found this prince charming guy so uh sergio's good friend and uh my sugar mama <laughs> mj lindo hello yay good to have uh, you on thanks for having me guys of yay. course so um i guess we'll start by saying uh what's what's uh what's new with you guys <laughs> well um I know that you guys also went to the the museum show at the Legion of Honor here in San Francisco near where we live. Yeah. So I actually got to check that out yesterday. Nice. And uh, it wasn't too crazy. It was there was a lot of people there still. Yeah, it was horrible for us. The parking was really bad. Yeah. I mean, we went on the weekend, so. Oh yeah. Did yeah. you guys actually get to park in the area of the Legion of Honor? Or did you guys have to like walk in? We. We well, we parked in the Legion of Honor area. Uh, oh, you were actually we, able to find something there. We kind of parked in a dirt area. Yeah, we parked oh, like yeah. in like there was like a guy doing like maintenance or something, like sitting on a golf cart, and we asked him like, "Hey, is it cool to park here?" He's like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah." We 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 went up this little road. That, I don't know. It was super thin. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. And it goes to behind the Legion of Honors. Is it the one that goes toward? Um, like uh not golden gate park whatever that the whatever park presidio thing whatever it's called there i'm not sure like going toward where the cypress trees are like you almost feel like you're you're um going behind the museum yeah, yeah. okay yeah. yeah i actually had to park there too yeah um, yeah we parked there and there was the what we thought was the last parking possible there and then when we left the museum there was like 15 new cars parked and Oh, new really? and creative spots that we did not think about. Oh wow! <clears throat> but yeah, it was uh, it was cool. That was the first time I've ever been there. Me too. Yeah, which amazes me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only that, yeah, it amazes me because it's kind of like a, a an amazing place. Uh, oh yeah. As far as like the artwork they have, it's it's uh, it's crazy that that exists. But it's great. It's also crazy because I don't. I've never heard of it prior to this like i've always yeah heard it's of, amazing like, that you the, never even heard of yeah, it yeah <laughs> like everybody talks about the moma everyone talks about yeah the oh, young sure. and yeah. all these other but i've never yeah, no one's ever like referenced the legion yeah of honor. i actually mm. learned about the legion of honor from like a friend that didn't even do art They're, oh really yeah they said oh we just went to the legion of honor and i'm like what is that uh, <laughs> do you, you think it was you somewhere? know because you're an artist <laughs> Do you think it was like a vet's building or something? That's kind of what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, I didn't know what it was. And uh, when they told me it was an art museum, I was like, oh, okay. And I thought it was kind of like, I've never heard of it. It must suck. And then yeah. I Googled it. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I've never heard of this place. That's kind of uh, yeah. stupid. Because, you know, um, the Palace of Fine Arts is that dome when you um, come down from from highway 101 from the golden gate bridge into where you turn to go on to van ness and lombard and all that mm -hmm. kind of by where the old exploratory yeah is exactly yeah, that yeah. that orange dome thing yep. is called the palace of fine art so you mm -hmm. would think that's what the museum would be called right so and what's in that dome oh it's just a little place where people take lots of photos and oh, like yeah. And stuff. <laughs> where yeah. you where you stand to take pictures when yeah. you're wearing a wedding dress <laughs> exactly yeah things in the city that like we've been so many times but there's sale things that are just like foreign to me oh like, yeah that it's just like i wonder what's in there there's huge parts of the city that i'm not familiar with at all yeah yeah i mean i just someone was just talking about how people that live in certain areas don't don't go to the touristy spots yeah you know? so oh, for sure i mean when's the last time you went to fisherman's wharf uh well when pokemon go was around <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's just say MJ forced me yeah, to a, go and walk like 11 miles that day. <laughs> <laughs> she did that twice. We I hope it was worth miles. it. Yes. Yeah, I mean. We, <laughs> we got some awesome. Yeah. 
Got to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, did you do anything fun this week? Uh, <clears throat> well, well, we didn't really talk about the actual show. <laughs> Which, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we like talked about the party. You're like, oh, so what else did you do? <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. But um, yeah, did you guys have a favorite piece from the show? Like, what what era do you think you guys like more of of Klimt's work? My favorite piece was actually probably it's like because we got just got married, but I don't know if you saw that little. He did this little card to his friend, so it was like almost like what you did for us. So mm-hmm. Josh and I just no, recently I got I married. That. And it was like in a tiny little hallway, yeah, like so exiting. Like a sketch. Oh. There was three sketches. Was, yeah. And one, oh, of, them, uh-huh. one um, of them was this one? tiny little card. It was like he, this big. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know it, if I saw that one. It was like Actually, a five by I wouldn't seven have noticed. Card. But I loved it because it was like his gift to his friends on their wedding day. And it just said like congrats. And it had like a, like a really tiny, beautifully illustrated woman like toasting. Oh, yeah, no it was, yeah. It was I way totally more. I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other. I think there was two other drawings and they were way more looser and then that mm-hmm. one was super rendered. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was tiny. cool. It yeah, was really awesome. tiny. Like the like a like a fingerprint size. Yeah, and wow. the hand drawing. the hand that he had done was like beautiful and like huh. super. Yeah. Yeah, but Yeah, so I guess he's oh, good. <laughs> so uh, if you go to visit that museum show before it comes down, make sure to look for that one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything was amazing. I was really into like, uh, I think it was the Russian room. I don't know what it is. Do you know what room I'm talking about with the huge like wedding painting they have? There? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's been one of my favorite paintings to look at when I go to the Legion. Yeah, that thing is amazing. And then there's a painting to the right where they have these turquoise walls uh-huh. um, yep. and a lady like bathe, getting bathed yeah, by what looks like a slave sh- or something. Uh-huh. I think it's a... Uh, uh, Jean Leon Jerome. Mm. So yeah, that's one of uh, my favorite. Um, that one's amazing too. I think it's the same room across from it that has the painting of. Um, it's in a gray frame or a silver frame of a girl mm-hmm. in, or I think it's a woman in in white, like yeah. this white dress. Almost looks like a wedding dress. Right, and yeah. the frame is all like medieval and way yeah. too <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture, yep. like, it just looks like Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Framing the, for it, but... Yeah, but that painting's much. amazing. Mm-hmm. That's one yeah, that one was amazing. The there was definitely mm-hmm. no subtlety in framing. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, they're like, how can we make this so outlandish <laughs> that it reminds people of Sketcher tennis shoes? <laughs> Sketcher tennis shoes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that was an awesome show. Yeah, and uh, you guys had time to look at everything else. It sounds like too. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we went and. I think like, he was asking you what your favorite Clint one. Clint, yeah, that Clint, was yeah, it was more Clint. more specifically um, the Clint because there were three different rooms with three very specific. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the really Andrew. tall, skinny one. Oh, I love that one. That was one of my favorite. <laughs> you know what one. I'm talking about with the, the girl in white. Or, oh, that one. Okay. Oh, that one There's was awesome two of them too. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there was something I really liked about the the one that you're talking about because uh-huh. it has kind of. I was reading the little card next to it and it right. talked about sort of his manifesto. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure which one that one. The one that had the same. It was called Nuda Veritas, and was it, it has, the redhead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the big okay. tall. Yeah, the big yeah. tall redhead with the um, was it. Um, <clears throat> Latin, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and I forget writing. what it said. It said, it said "Well, nuda veritas cool. means like naked truth." Mm-hmm. And basically, yeah, I wish I could remember exactly what it said in it, but it kind of alluded to him talking about like uh, how people look for the truth in sort of metaphors and all these other things, and and it's more like here's the truth, like looking straight at you, right? What are something you gonna like do that. about it? I thought it was more. If I, I thought it was something like follow whatever you want type of thing. Like don't follow I think the it masses. Was. Yeah, yeah it was I something in so. that. Yeah, I might just be confusing like the the card, like the right. other stuff that was written on the card with what's actually right. Like, well, quoted. I think <laughs> I, weren't they quoting Rodan in that? Yeah, it was he was quoting someone else. I don't remember yeah. who oh, okay. it was. I can't remember. It was pretty oh, awesome yeah. though. It was like basically, it's just like the artist. I think mentality, like who cares about like riches and all this type of thing like just right. do, do you boo boo <laughs> yeah exactly. I think that's what it said, mm-hmm. Something, <laughs> it said almost word you, for word <laughs> but it 
in Latin or something. So, <laughs> do as you as you <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so uh, you also had a photo shoot, right? We both, we I, yeah, all three I did, yeah. had photo we shoots all last week. Shoots. So, how did yours go? It went okay. <laughs> um, uh, so, I had um, Jessamine Rose, who you can find on Instagram. She has a pretty big following, too. And uh, I'd been following her for a long time because I follow like all the pretty models on Instagram. <laughs> all of them? I try to. <laughs> like you with Pokemon, I'm with the models. <laughs> but, yeah, so she came through and she has friends in Santa Rosa, so it kind of worked out that way because it's far enough. Most people, when they come to, to work in, in the Bay Area, they stick around San Francisco, Oakland, everything. And, so it's usually a bit of a haul for people to come all the way up to Santa Rosa work. So when that gets to happen, that's great. And so um, it was a cold day, and she lives in Los Angeles and is from Australia. So <laughs> this amount of weather, this type of weather, even though people on the East Coast are probably laughing at 50-degree weather, it's still pretty damn cold for us right. up here. Right. So and she, she, when you took pictures of her, she just looked like a huge goosebump. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Yes, yeah, she's a pale redhead. So, um, yeah, she's already pale enough. So with the cold weather, right? Were her hands and feet turning red though? I feel like that makes for a good picture, <laughs> at least. Because pale people are weak. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of Sergio's mouth, not mine. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just quoting him. <clears throat> Josh does uh, a good impression of me. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, she was huddled by the the heater that I have, little space heater that barely does much to to the area because my studio is almost no insulation in it. So yeah, in between shoots, she was or in between yeah our, our sessions. Yeah, she was basically like I had hot tea for her and everything, did everything I could, but I was just like. I don't recommend people to come work with me in the dead of winter because it's just not comfortable but she was a trooper she um we worked for a couple hours and i got a good amount of of pictures from it but um as i was doing them though i didn't think they were great not because it of any of her fault really it's just because i i didn't really i wasn't really directing her much i'm not really good at directing models when i work with them anyway Usually yeah. what the, when they come up with things on their own, it's almost always better than mm. than what I direct them to do. That's for sure. I mean, models in general, they just understand their body more than we probably will ever. Yeah, as artists exactly. understand <laughs> ours. We understand how, our arm and how it moves well. But yeah. um, uh, as far as... Yeah, I know a lot of photographers who have a real talent for directing mm. models. My friend Jason is one of them. Mm. But I just don't have that. So yeah. it's usually yeah. better when I let them do what they want. And it's like a learning curve, I think. Yeah. yeah. So I had her wear um, a couple of, of different dresses, which is not usually something I, I shoot with either. Um, mm -hmm. Usually it's almost always nude or just like a little uh, ornament, some sort of decoration. Or, so instead this time I thought, oh, okay, I'll try something different. And some of the poses, uh, I guess, I don't know if you're a model, you can maybe weigh in on this if, if you're out there listening, but I think you become a little bit more restricted in, in your movement or your feeling with it while you're, while you're wearing something, it's not as, you, maybe you don't feel as free, uh, when you're, as when you're completely nude. So some of the poses, they just felt a little too static compared to what I normally work with, but mm. it, a lot of the pictures, sort of came alive in in the processing stage that i'm in right now where, where you go in and you find a, a cool crop to everything or like oh this her face looks awesome in this one it's like right really beautiful in that way one thing i will say is uh that whenever i'm working with a model <clears throat> something that seems to work well for me is just taking like a little bit of time and explaining the concept i have behind the painting and right kind of letting them from and giving them a rough idea of the gesture I want or whatever to convey whatever I want to convey mm -hmm. and then kind of letting them go from there and and uh them knowing their body as well as they do doing right. what they do um yeah and and usually I get uh really good stuff 
just from kind of giving them the mindset I want them to be as far as like the emotional state of whoever the person is I'm trying to portray in the painting or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if that applies to you at all, but <clears throat> probably not as much because I usually don't have like a, a really right. like a fleshed out concept. It's usually right. just continuing on a theme for, for the most part. Right. I, I just figured I'd share just for people listening. Yeah, totally. So they could have, so do you, do you have any input as far as when you're working with a model, do you, what goes through your head as far as <clears throat> trying to get them to do pull out the idea you have in your head mj well when i've you. when i've worked with models i've already i've reached out to them already mm -hmm. and i have an idea of what they can do so um what i do is try and come up with concepts based off of what they've already done and stuff that i know that is kind of in their element um i it is tough like what sergio is saying is when i'm trying to get a certain emotion out of someone um there's definitely some models that we've worked with that are a little bit better at expressing their emotion because for me that's huge i i want to be able to pr portray a feeling in a piece so if a model can do that just with an expression it's huge um but i think it's actually probably something that's more rare i feel like most models probably don't have that it's like an element of mm. acting almost it right. is yeah um so uh that's always hard to get through but Mm -hmm. I think like kind of and I'm assuming it depends on the model but I think that a change of like wardrobe might actually bring some stuff out of them depending mm -hmm. on what they're wearing like, right so it just depends on like I think the model and then the wardrobe and like Josh said like explaining like um, a certain idea that you have or like sometimes I show them I don't know if you said that but if uh, I'll show them like a thumbnail that I had done or something like that right yeah, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't say that, but yeah, mm -hmm. that works too. Yeah, I had her <clears> wearing <throat> this really cool retro sort of 50s, 60s -ish style dress. And um, she has this real pinup-y vibe to her. Mm. And the problem is I don't normally shoot that kind of stuff. But mm. I like it, but I just don't have enough experience with it. So it was more a fault of me not really knowing how to direct her in that way. So. Yeah, it's definitely tough. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a gift to be able to direct a model like that's. You have your models that just naturally can give you everything, and then there's mm -hmm. also the photographer who can has a gift of bringing certain things out of the models. Yeah, is, and mm -hmm. I think another thing too is transferring a picture and and creating artwork from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. One big thing is <clears throat> a picture, unless you're doing photorealism, will capture little subtleties that. Uh, might not translate well in art oh, or might sure. not um you know or you just might not be able to accomplish that uh like technically because it might just be too tough yeah uh, so i i i've slowly realized that sometimes you have to exaggerate a little bit more than probably models are used to mm -hmm. uh just to kind of convey something in a painting mm. that maybe in in a photograph, it'll just be kind of too intense or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, just like with pulling of like how they, you know, might like use like their eyes. I'm always seeming to have the models pull their eyes to like, oh, have you look all the way to this corner over here? You know, like keep your face towards me, but pull your eyes all the way up here to like in a right. comfortable position. Yeah. Uh, just to, um, convey in a way where you know where there's the white under the iris so that mm -hmm. it's you know it's very obvious that they're looking up rather than like slightly looking up or something yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and things like that mm -hmm. um i find important and it's just kind of like a learning curve yeah i mean that. we've only been working with models for about a year and i as we continue to work with them that we find different ways to direct them as well but there's also a difference between working with we found even the you know we appreciate all the models that we've worked with but um there is a huge difference between models who have like a huge portfolio because there's we need to we direct them less but i've also mm -hmm. gotten some of the best images off of models that don't have much experience so oh, kind sure. of yeah. like so there's not one you know it's like trying to again let a model know what we need from them as well 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's go back to MJ and just kind of crack your head open a little bit. Uh, so how'd you get into art? Um, <laughs> I don't know. So I've had, so there's pictures that date back long time. I like MySpace long? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was probably, I don't know. I, I've moved around so much. So I, um, I was born in Miami, Florida and I moved to, um, Canada, then Oklahoma, then lived in Nicaragua for two years and then, um, came here to California and throughout all of that I just kind of Didn't had... Didn't you live in Brazil a little bit? No, no, no. I just have family in Brazil. Uh, How okay. old were you when you moved to California? 12, I think. Like oh, were you? Oh, wow. Yeah, like 10, 11, 12, huh. something like that. 13, 14 or... No, well, I can't, <laughs> between 10 and 12, like, oh, yeah. I, I don't remember. Whatever, you're in fourth grade. Mm, I think you're like uh, 10. Yeah. yeah. I want to say 10. I, I remember 10. like coming here in fourth grade mm. oh, okay so that's yeah so i got here in fourth grade but Unless out of all really the places, bad student yeah <laughs> out of all the places is there a place you miss the most or i miss wish you lived well i i lived in toronto which i always like liked the idea of living in a big city mm -hmm. um i always liked toronto too just because like as a kid i liked playing with the snow <laughs> right. but as an adult i don't know how much i'd love living in the snow because i know that we used to have to take a lot of public public transportation because the cars just get ruined mm. right so as a kid it's an adventure but as an adult like trying to get to work every day and stuff like that probably is not that fun which is probably why my parents moved <laughs> but um yeah i've been i you know i've kind of carried art around with me just because it's like something that i that always brought me comfort in moving right. so much yeah i agree i mean i moved a lot of, not not so dramatically i always was in california but mm. we moved around a ton when we were kids i think it's like 10 houses i've lived in or 10 mm -hmm. different whatever places i've lived in mm. throughout my life maybe more i i did, counted it up one, at one point in my life uh probably more now that i think about it mm. but um uh but yeah, I th I think one of the good things about art is it's 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 like really it doesn't take up that much space, right? And yeah, you know, so you have a couple pencils, some mm. paper, and that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. You know, so when you're traveling around, it's not like a piano mm -hmm. where you it's a whole ordeal to mm -hmm. to move that from house to house or whatever. Yeah, it's definitely like I always hear that when it's like. You know, I'm really lucky to have a studio right now. But prior to that, you know, like I spent years just like drawing in sketchbooks and doing tiny little renderings and uh, ruining my parents' carpet <laughs> when I lived at home because I would l I would paint on our carpet living room floor and there's really? still like a ton of stains. Yeah, <laughs> not like paint on it. But, no, no, no. But yeah, like, well, I would be painting like my painting like, sitting on the floor and I would like spill. the rug was your canvas basically. Right. No, 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 like oh, I would okay. spill. I would have like the my wood panel sitting down you would oh, your okay. body, and then i would then be <laughs> painting and then i would like grab something it would spill so those spills are still all over oh, the floor okay, right you know so right. i mean it's uncomfortable i understand it but it's definitely doable to like you know like do your art without having a lot of space yeah yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. but yeah I, i've been painting ever since i can remember though. not painting drawing yeah. because i started painting when i was 15 mm -hmm. and um prior to that i would just like mainly draw which is crazy because i mentioned that the other day where um i'm trying to get back into drawing because i feel like there's elements that i've lost mm -hmm. um painting you know like i i don't draw that much anymore like i'll do mm -hmm. sketches i'll do initial drawing and then i think sergio it. was saying that last week too yeah it's kind of like because i feel like i draw probably a lot more than both of you yeah do. yeah uh and it's just because that's kind of i don't know it's just Your a basis. habit of mine yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't draw much, but um, that's all I used to do. Mm -hmm. And I probably enjoy drawing more than painting, but yeah. I, because painting, making a painting just seems like um, it takes a lot out of me, mm. where a drawing is kind of... I love painting. You know, just do it real quick, have fun, and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you uh, love, you're the type that likes that instant gratification, like... Yeah, and I mean, I think that's part of the graffiti background. Yeah, I, I like both. So I feel like I, I have this balance where there's this 
shut your mind off and kind of have fun. And then there's this concentrate and, you know, it's like this meditation or whatever form of meditation where I just sit there and just zone out and, mm. and, you know, for a week work on a painting. and I love painting skin, though. And I love the colors that go into painting skin. So mm-hmm. And I can't get that from drawing. Right. So that's like, that's my favorite part of art is painting, like bringing um, skin tones and eyes and lips to life. And it doesn't quite give me the same satisfaction in the drawing. Although mm-hmm. there's been drawings that I'm like, oh, like that was awesome. You know, that was fun. Like I liked how that drawing came out. But there's, I'll, it's never going to compare to like when I'm really happy with the painting. Mm. Yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, well, you guys are um, <laughs> but I, stupid. Well, it's, it's but that's not the same as like you know, like I like one of my favorite artists, Zoe Milk. Like, right? She does beautiful drawings and renderings, and it's mm-hmm. like, and then I see a drawing and I see a painting, and like I can't decide which I love more. Oh, right. You know, like mm-hmm. I mean, like, I've always been attracted to drawings. Mm-hmm. In ge- like uh, just in general, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I love paintings, but there's something about drawings, or even I get it too from paintings that are not fully finished. You know, kind of yeah. where you there's like really rendered parts of it, and then the rest is either loosely done, or you could see like under drawings and stuff. Mm-hmm. I really like that. I should probably figure out how to do that myself in my paintings. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's what I really like in a lot of stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I also like finishing things, so mm-hmm. it's kind of not my nature to do it. I just really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as far as painting is, I mean, drawing's all. I yeah, I know exactly how that feels because yeah, my inclination is to to render everything out, have it all in a finished way, and I usually don't even have the time to do that Mm -hmm. but um at the same time when i look at a lot of the paintings that i like there's a bit of an element of unfinished or Mm -hmm. or just the focal point is is rendered in a way where that's the finished part and everything else has a more of a looseness a sense of energy or mystery to it yeah Yeah. i love that in paintings Mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to get to where i have a bit more of that in my own work Mm -hmm. yeah me too yeah, mm-hmm. that's definitely something that I lack. Because <laughs> <laughs> you I'd like, like to render to, everything right, out. Right, yeah. I'd like to have it, but I need to figure out a way to do it where it doesn't mm-hmm. just look weird. Yeah. yeah. So as far as schooling, did you get any schooling in your art? Um, so, so, yeah, I never... Uh, so my parents put me in, like, random art classes when we finally moved here. Like, I, I never took any art classes. I just kind of kept the sketchbook and colored for a long time or whatever but um uh i started taking some classes here and there when i we moved here to california and then um i didn't do anything for a really long time until towards the end of high school when um my oh the one of the first things that got me back into painting was uh there's these like charlie brown statues that are all around santa rosa mm-hmm. i think it's sonoma county but i did two of them because and uh because he's from here oh. like this area right that's why i don't know yeah he Charles lived, schultz yeah he's he's originally from i want to say somewhere in the midwest but yeah he called uh this area home sonoma county yeah mm-hmm. he lived here for mm-hmm. most of his career i think yeah. at least yeah. so yeah so he they did like these projects where they would uh commission artists to do uh, to somehow paint or create or sculpt these statues. Right. And I got chosen two years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, and like all artists were trying to do this. Like you would get paid um, and get printed in books and stuff. But I got it when I was like well, 17. not all artists. I didn't try. Well, all the artists, like a lot of the artists, like working artists around here were trying to do it because well, it was like... I mean. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I was super like excited when I got accepted because I was 17 and it was like my first big gig. You right. Know? Yeah. Like, Did you um, have a lot of older artists oh, giving yeah, I was, you the eye? <laughs> well, one of the ladies, like one of my uh, one of my mentors had tried to get in and didn't and mine got Ooh. chosen over hers. But she was excited for me. She was like, you know. Like, right. Um, like, but deep down inside though. <laughs> like deep down inside, she was like... <laughs> Kill MJ. <laughs> <laughs> Take MJ's spot. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
But um, after that, I started painting for the city of Santa Rosa for a group <clears throat> called Art Start. And that's when I started Art painting. Art <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Yeah, bad joke. <laughs> I mean, it's it's okay. Someone's Sorry. out there laughing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's sick, so he's not thinking straight. He's got the sick brain. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, it's only sick. episode two. It's a learning experience. <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm battling a really bad cold right now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, my brain's a little wonky. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So then I started. Then I got hired to work for the city, like restoring murals and doing benches. Um, when I was like. 16 years old i think 15 or 16 mm-hmm. um and that's when i first was introduced to painting because the way you would apply for the program was to show them your your portfolio but all i had was drawings mm-hmm. so then they kind of taught me how to paint a kind of like I, they just kind of threw me in there and told me what i was doing wrong mm-hmm. um but then it's probably a good way to learn yeah it wasn't that <laughs> it wasn't bad i mean one of the things that um i mean it's a great program one of the things that i was frustrated with was like uh and i'm i'm assuming it just goes with any artist but as you know i was like a young teenage girl and i would paint something and then one of the like lead artists would come and paint over it because they're like oh you did it wrong and they would <laughs> paint over something i painted mm. and i'd be like oh <laughs> but right. that's like you know it's still it was still a good experience and mm. um uh after that i just like went to junior college took some classes but I think I took I took figure drawing classes for a couple of years, but that's as much. And I took mm. a color theory class, mm. but um, I took one painting class uh, my whole life, and they just it was almost like an independent study. Like they didn't like show me anything. Like the lady would just let me do whatever I wanted. Mm. Um, Sounds great. <laughs> but then there was a teacher at the junior college that I was like, so I tried to create a body of work when I was like nineteen. Mm. And I never thought of it as like, I always thought that like art, you could only be like an animator or something like that. Mm. But, um, when I was 19, I saw my first juxtaposed magazine and mm. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and I just realized that there was people actually doing their art out mm-hmm. there and it was awesome. Right. And I remember specifically, and I don't know if I have that magazine anymore because I bought it. It was Sylvia G. Oh, no. and she was like on the cover and she was like the, no i don't know if she was on the cover but she had like a spread in the um in the magazine mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god like this is beautiful and i can't believe she's doing this and like, right. she was showing i think at white walls at that time and i mm-hmm. just like she just it white just blew walls. my mind it, it like blew my mind <laughs> yeah. it just like was exactly what i needed and since that that day um i was like yeah i'm gonna do this Right. And um, I mean, it's many years later, but I'm still trying to do it, you know, like. Yeah. And I'm. Do you remember what year that was? I mean, I was 19. I don't. So what, like two years ago? (laughs) 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 So trying to, uh, because we met through, actually through mutual friend of ours, Juan. Mm -hmm. And you, I don't know, you were probably around 19. Yeah. Juan. Juan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was probably around 19 when I met Sergio. Maybe, yeah. Maybe younger, but it was right around that time because I remember, like, I was thinking about that the other day and I remember meeting Sergio and it was like a weird conversation because we were sitting around a campfire and I had my eyes closed because my eyes were watering and I was trying to talk to Sergio with my eyes closed <laughs> and we were talking like art <laughs> and it was just a weird conversation, but... Right. Yeah. But yeah. And Sergio was probably super talkative at the time. <laughs> 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 uh but yeah and then sergio and i just kept on running into like each other at art shows around here they would have like pop-up shows in santa rosa right mm-hmm. and like uh we just like ran into each other there but um yeah i think i yeah. told you about the first ones that uh it was a thing called kaleidoscope that mm-hmm. they did for a couple of years and um yeah i got, I got you in touch with the people there who were um running it and it seems like it did well for you relatively so like it got you in front of people around here at least but uh yeah i mean i had been i had shown kind of like i had tried to show in cafes and stuff prior to that and art start would do their own like little art shows and stuff but it was Mm. the first time that i was trying to get my own art uh, on walls Mm. so those like little because they were like one day shows like they were pop-up shows that were up for like a day right Mm -hmm. but those were the ones that kind of gave me the confidence to like 
go to San Francisco and say, hey, show oh, my okay. art. I've shown right. at this place. Yeah. So it yeah. was like, uh, even right. though it wasn't like, like the um, biggest thing, I'm like, do you know can, who I am? <laughs> yeah, can exactly. I talk to the owner of the MoMA? <laughs> 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 Pretty much. <laughs> Let yeah. me speak with Mr. MoMA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is this MoMA guy? I've been about? <laughs> and he had not seen my work. So. Uh, but, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I, anyways, back to how long I've been painting. I've been painting as long as I can remember. So yeah. infinite years. Yes. So, so when I first met you, you were, you were painting. Your work had, was a bit more, I guess, on the morbid side than it is now. Like at the time, you're painting like a lot of skulls and mm-hmm. girls right. with parts missing from their cheeks yeah <laughs> but yeah. uh it more your your point of view and style has more or less been somewhat consistent from that like i can see the similarities of it that still run through your work now um when you first started painting was that always a subject that you always gravitated toward and you kind of moved away from it just from anything in particular well like i guess i'm trying to get to like where do you where did you like did start from happen? and then how do you get to where you are now in terms of right. like style and subject matter yeah so and why aren't the women missing body parts anymore <laughs> i think well what, where are the moths i think the problem is like when i did discover juxtapose i was trying really hard to have like a style like oh i need to have something right. that people are like oh that's mj <laughs> and I was just trying to figure that out at that moment. Um, I know that I wanted it to be feminine. I want. I know that I w- wanted it to be. Um, That's sexist. <laughs> to have a femininity about mm-hmm. it, you know, oh. like uh, I don't okay. know, but it That's took acceptable. It took a while. <laughs> it took. We're not. We're gender non-binary. non-binary. <laughs> um, but yeah, it took a while. I mean, I painted that for years it was really influenced by like day of the dead type of stuff and um, right just like you know like i am of latin background and Mm. i've grown up with a lot of like that type of but mj's a a redhead in (laughs) (laughs) spider-man well i'm not a redhead i don't have pale skin or red hair okay but so mary jane isn't your Mm -mm. name Mm -hmm. This is news to me. (laughs) Uh, Um, I forget what we were talking about. About Day of the Dead. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, there are certain colors that I was, like, drawn to. But um, I think that, you know, as I... The the people, like, ask, like, how do you come up with a style? But the only way that you truly... I don't think... It's like John Wentz was talking about. I don't think there's a style. It's just, like, what you're painting at that time. And I mm. can't help what yeah. I'm painting, you know, like, right. it's like, as I did a body of work, I realized like that the elements that I were adding where it was like these morbid elements didn't do anything for my pieces. Mm. So it's like, I, um, I mean, not only, not only, uh, that as far as the style thing, but I was going to say, I think it's also just what you're prone to do. So, right. mm-hmm. uh, for instance, you paint with really tiny brushes and you blend a lot, <clears throat> and that seems to be what you enjoy to do. Mm. And so, I'm always trying to pull you away from that and say, I mean, not say you shouldn't blend or whatever, but say, oh, you should like try this or that for this. Yeah. Uh, which is always a, a battle. A battle. <laughs> uh, and I think that's because you enjoy painting the way you paint so much right so for me i see that there you know in my opinion i'm like oh there's a better way to do that but for you it's like but this is how i do it (laughs) so yeah and there's some give and take like i do want to grow as an artist so i appreciate like criticisms but there are things that i don't think that i can stop doing you know like yeah, I couldn't like try and paint a whole painting with a palette knife, you know, like that's just not me. Mm-hmm. Right. But I mean, that's a huge jump. I know. <laughs> I'm just taking it for one extreme. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, yeah like uh, as I progress, like my ch- my, and I think like five years from now, I you know I might be painting different, but you'll still see elements of like what I'm doing now and what I was doing right. then. You know, yeah, like yeah, for I think sure. I'll always paint something that someone. Even if I were to, you know, like I do want to start incorporating some men into my artwork, but I would still try and make them like beautiful and like somewhat, 
like even if it's a masculine man? well yeah even if it's like a masculine man i'm painting mm-hmm. he'll still have wisps of hair like beautifully like <laughs> right. like fabio <laughs> oh hello <laughs> There's just certain things if that anyone I want to get the word out to Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone has Fabio's contact info, please send it in MJ's direction. <laughs> uh, but, there will be yeah. no geese in the picture. <laughs> well, no, never Who'd mind. He once broke his nose. Oh, yeah. Be a geese. <laughs> On a roller coaster, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Be a gooses. Goose. Geese. Geese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well. Maybe so, he'll find you on Instagram. Speaking yeah. of Instagram. Uh-huh. I'm so you me. have how many followers at this point? Uh, 60,000 something. And how the hell did that happen? Um, it happened before the algorithm. <laughs> so that's how that happened. It makes a lot of algorithm yeah, so for nothing. Instagram is a huge frustration for me right now because it's like, yeah. it's just one of those things that you see like artists that are doing really well with just like Instagram sales and like that mm-hmm. how they're making their living. But, mm-hmm. Right. You know, if it's just tough because they've changed it completely and it's so tough to ga- gain followers right. now. And it's mm-hmm. like, I was having this conversation with like one of my Instagram besties, uh, Wendy Ortiz, <laughs> and she was well, telling me what's that. What's an Instagram bestie? She, I have a few of them. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't that even know what like, that means. We're, we're like almost like BFFs, but on through Instagram. Right. Do you know her in person? No, we've been meaning to. We told oh, her wow. we would, I want to try and set up and she seems kind of camera shy. I think like <laughs> she's like, I'm pretty camera shy, but she seems a little less camera shy. I don't know, but <laughs> she seems kind of camera shy. And Where does she I'd live? I'd love to uh, do a portrait of her. She's in LA. Oh, okay. But she seemed maybe interested. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Mm. I think it'd be a fun experience to just paint other artists. Like I've always kind of liked that idea. So, Will you know. paint wisps in my hair if you paint me? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So I was talking to her about like our frustrations with Instagram, and she has like over four hundred thousand followers. Oh wow! And she's right. experienced the exact same frustrations that you know we are with smaller followings. And right. it's like you know she she says that you know she'll post she'll do like her due diligence and post like every day in the right time and blah 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 and this mm-hmm. and this and then she'll still like one post will do really well and then like the next post will she'll lose like followers so there's like right. no real no real math to it I think it's like at this point I don't know what the answer for Instagram is because it used yeah. to be you know like I remember when Josh started he would post something and get between three hundred to five hundred followers per post or something like that wow really? but now it's a little exaggerated <laughs> no i remember seeing that like i remember I mean, you getting once like, in a while yeah. you mean likes or followers no like followers, followers. really yeah. 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 yeah it was like a thing where if i didn't get at least 100 followers per, per post, post yeah i thought it was weird yeah oh, really wow and now i'm like fingers crossed but i mean these are like i don't know high uh i mean this is this is this is like first world problem, but I don't know, I know. how to word it for internet sake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. First, um, <laughs> I don't know, high high speed internet problems. This is <laughs> this is not the biggest. I mean, I don't, yeah. it's tough. I mean, it's, it's tough and it's not tough. Well, it's like it, it's the problem it's, is when you rely so heavily on social media, especially mm-hmm. nowadays with uh, you know growing uh, awareness of your artwork, and then it just becomes tough because then you feel reliant on it and then there's also the whole thing of being addicted to social media as you know and getting that like dopamine fix from the amount of likes you're getting and comments and all these mm-hmm. things so it's uh, i don't know social media just becomes this weird thing where uh it means too much to us <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean well, it is tough if you're making your living off right, of it. Right, yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, that's, and that's yeah. kind of like... your own doing in that way. Yeah. That's what you... Yeah. Well, that's why, like, there's artists that I look up to, like, uh, there's... And that's why I want to focus on YouTube this year, because I feel like if you have a strong following over these, like, different outlets, then you're kind oh, of, yeah, like, definitely. good. Because if something happens to Instagram, you still have your YouTube, and if mm-hmm. something happens to YouTube, you still have, you know, whatever... But, you have um, your podcast. Yeah, you have your podcast. Even if you don't have your podcast, then you have the crazy man at the bus stop <laughs> to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> it all works out in the end. We'll but, always yeah. talk. It's just a matter of how many people we reach. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, but yeah, it's tough. I mean, it used to it used to be a lot easier. Like I remember the I think I had like over ten thousand followers, but before mm-hmm. I one year. Yeah. But now I've been. Yeah, on it was it amazing because like, when I first uh, saw your your stuff on Instagram. You were probably at around like 12,000. I was like, how the hell did MJ pull this off? Because like, yeah. I, I wasn't right. really talking with you a whole lot back then. But uh, I was still always like, oh, wow, she's doing something, right? Yeah, it used to be yeah. a lot easier. And I, and it, yeah. Go ahead. I, it's still like Instagram is weird because I think that it truly, if you put in the work, you'll get like the rewards. But the problem with mm. Instagram is that they yeah. want you to be on there all day. So mm. yeah. they and want I think you, they also just they have to deal with random people trying to crack algorithms mm-hmm. for reasons oh for, for sure like yeah financial reasons that aren't necessarily the best of reasons yeah and so we kind of all suffer because of that because mm-hmm. they're too busy trying to figure out how first of all how to get us addicted to whatever mm-hmm. social media they're building and mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. And then how to keep out the unsavory instagrammers right. or whatever errs um that are you know trying to take advantage of their system yeah well instagram wants you to like every time they implement something new it seems like uh they reward those who are using it so if you're so they want you to post they want you to put in the stories they want you to do live things they want you to Mm -hmm. like comment like do all this stuff um and they want it to be done all day or they or you just like don't exist to them and don't you know show right. up on other which people's is funny feeds. because now they're kind of pulling back from that and saying oh we're sorry we got you guys addicted to social media and then it's yeah. like well you're still doing it mm-hmm. you know you're still trying to get us hooked and that's the reason the algorithm is what it is is because you're trying to get us to non-stop be on our phone right mm-hmm. uh to get followers i remember yeah. I, there's a like a famous uh chef i follow on instagram and like yesterday i think was his kid's birthday <laughs> hope he never finds out i'm talking, about, talking him. about him but <laughs> so his kid asked him for his birthday if he could uh because the chef has like two hundred thousand followers or something like that mm-hmm. and he's like oh my, all my kid won for his birthday is to get is for me to is he asked me if i can get him instagram followers and i was like <laughs> <laughs> That's so shitty. It's crazy. Why does well, he want that? Well, he should want a remote control car. Every boy should want a remote control <laughs> car. Yeah, it's pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. I guess uh, I'm I guess I'm lucky to not have grown up in that because I yeah. didn't care about it until now. Mm-hmm. And I have other accounts. Like I have a private account that I don't care if anybody follows. You know, I'm just posting it for But why are you bringing myself. it up then? Well, I didn't name it, did I? <laughs> But I'm saying, like, it's if it of, wasn't for my artwork, <laughs> I wouldn't care. You know, like, if it wasn't for my artwork, oh, like, yeah, I did, yeah. I never had MySpace. Like, I got Facebook way late, and I never use it. Like, mm. I've never been one about to be super on social media until my artwork mm. kind of took over. And right. now it's so like if you weren't very an artist, you wouldn't really even be on it. Or if there was she different would ways, be. she would just no. be looking at puppies and no. Well, I've I, like I said, kittens. like it wasn't like you know everyone was on Facebook. I wasn't on Facebook. I've had like, I think I got Facebook when I started dating Josh or something like that, mm. like right before. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I had like when, but I haven't had it that long, and right. then I don't use it. Right. You know, so <laughs> I've never been like a social media person, and um, it like I said, it's not until I've had my artwork where I've kind of had like an outlet to share. I don't really care to right. share other than that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, hmm. But yeah. yeah. So so going back to your decaying women, those were <laughs> so those were zombies, right? Or yeah, they were like undead women. Undead hmm. women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now your artwork like corpse bridesy, but done not that well. Right, <laughs> yeah. and and now and now your artwork's a lot more lighthearted and um, whimsical. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. So what? What? So it seemed. Also, you you seem to have like a lot of witches as mm-hmm. well. I, mm-hmm. I mean, I might have an insight on this as far as your obsession with with witches. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is. Uh, w- what makes you want to paint this whimsical uh, world? Uh, also, you kind of had a horror theme in it, first being zombies and now being witches. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess w- what's next? 
Chucky dolls, <laughs> mummies. I'm just trying to get people ready. Well, I feel like the zombie stuff, like I said, was me just trying to grasp at like a style. Right. Which wasn't the correct way to go. And then mm. I decided to just to stop trying so hard to have like a, a distinctive style or a thing that people knew me for. Right. Mm. And more just start paint what I want, start to paint what I wanted to paint. So that's what I'm doing right now. And um, what I paint is like I was having well, i like did a post on this other day but it's basically like i'm having a conversation with myself mm. uh, with every painting i'm doing and i'm trying to get to know myself and trying to like figure out what it is like if i'm gonna sit down and do a painting i want to enjoy it that's like um i'm trying to create like a world that i'd love to live in type of thing like that's why like a lot of these uh figures are like uh, have some sort of like magical essence or so wait you want a world where there's witches yes I'm a witch but then in this world but then if there were witches then we would have to burn them at the stake <laughs> <laughs> and that'd be like a whole thing you'd have to take oh, yeah. time out of our days to mm. go to like the squ- the public square and all yell like burn her as we throw cabbage at her <laughs> and I don't got cabbage money <laughs> <laughs> so uh, don't got the cabbage for the cabbage <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so do you want to rethink that <laughs> so i guess my question uh, i'm sorry it's kind of uh, it's kind of so where suck. do you think the witch obsession came from i've always been obsessed obsessed with witches it's another thing that i can think of as as, as long as i can remember at least i think until until i was like a little girl mm. i've always been obsessed like mm. um like uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch and like, oh yeah right all these like super old like Charmed and yeah I remember oh, the, really? when mm-hmm. me and MJ first started dating she sent me this link of this movie called like Teen Witch or something like oh, that I love Teen and Witch and it was this horrible <laughs> rap thing oh my gosh and she that sent it to great. me and uh, <laughs> I mean my response to most things MJ sent to, sends to me is please stop doing this. <laughs> please, please stop sending me everything you're sending me. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, that was, that is stuck in my head as one of the things that is, it's like, what is this? And I think it goes back to like, even the Wizard of Oz because she's, mm. she was a good witch. She's like, she's a good witch. Well, one of them was. Yeah. Well, I the wanted to be Glenda the, good, the witch. good witch. Yeah, yeah, Glenda the good witch. <laughs> yeah. But I've always had, I think it's just more just Not magic. Not the one with the water allergy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she was horrible. <laughs> but or misunderstood. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 she was misunderstood. If you, There's the book Wicked that goes like pre that and she like turned, people used to make fun of her because she had green are those so, Are those like, are those both the same author? I, I remember I've never read Wicked, but I was told I never finished it, but it was kind of sad. Some parts about it. Like um I think the, I think the good witch always People should know that the guys in the room are looking at each other so lost. <laughs> as soon as, I know. As soon as like Sergio Wicked came up. Sergio <laughs> read it, right? Let's like, talk about musicals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyways, I well know. I could talk about witches for hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start your You've witch also podcast. Got like a huge wizard obsession with this guy with a scar on his forehead. Yeah, I'm obsessed <laughs> with Harry Potter. Nice. Yeah. I'm obsessed. Did you read the new book? I'm more book? of a Voldemort guy. No, I have it. I have not like had the chance to sit down and read it. Mm. I know I was I there's this thing called um Pottermore and you can sign up and see what house you are and I was really upset when I found out I was Slytherin. <laughs> Because I'm like, if, if I could through choose, through. <laughs> if I could choose, I would pick Slytherin. I know. Josh was like a Hufflepuff. <laughs> don't you start those lines. <laughs> I don't even know what Huff, I don't, I'm not a big Harry Potterer. They're the I'm, corny guys. Huh? They're like the corny house. I know. That's why she says it. She says it because she knows that it's, she's like talking shit, but. I don't really get it. So I'm like, <laughs> I know that's not true. <laughs> You're trying to talk shit and nerd. I would totally think you were Slytherin too, but I, I am. No, and one thing not. it told me I was Slytherin, and then another thing, whatever this thing is, it's the totally true wrong. Thing, the true hat sorting. Said I was yeah. some other thing. The hat knows. <laughs> the truth. Uh, even if I was another group, I would just hang out with the Slytherin people. <laughs> I mean, like, they fucked up. I'm, I'm you guys. <laughs> You're one of us. Yeah. Baltimore, I'm down with him. 
Uh, I'm. I think that Harry Potter kid is overrated. What I mean, what's so special about him? Is pretty much what I would say. It's all about Luna Lovegood. <laughs> That's who you know. They what's first crazy about Luna book. Lovegood is that um, uh, when they were casting for her. Cool, still- cool, cool. Back to art. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I really want to talk about that. Back to art. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing we want to do in our show is critique the artist that's in the show. I'm going to get some hate for the Luna Love Good thing. They're like, let her finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this isn't a Harry Potter podcast. <laughs> MJ, feel free to start that. Yeah, you and yeah, your I'm sister. Start, now yeah. you know what your next YouTube video is going to be gonna all about. Start, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start a Harry Potter podcast. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got time for that. You know what <laughs> house I would be in? <laughs> uh, yeah, her and her sister would just talk for hours. It would be a seven-hour listen every time. <laughs> you know people would listen to every each minute. I should yeah. start that. That's a great idea. Yeah, is it? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we, we have a painting by MJ. Um, it Do you is, have a title for it? Yeah, what is the title? I don't remember. Oh, it, um, it was uh, God. It had something to do with like taking. Does rest, it say on the back? Taking a break or something like that. Hold on. The painting's <laughs> called the Scun, so it just means like taking a break. Um, oh, taking a break. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the concept for this painting was actually for a group show at Wonderland, and she had us do like luchador themed paintings, which. Mm. Um, well, maybe you guys can like tell me what. So you what like. we see is we see this young girl mm-hmm. uh, wearing a luchador uh, mask, which for anyone that doesn't know is a Latin wrestler. I don't know if it's specifically a Mexican wrestler. I think it is. Uh, and uh, she's drinking from a old fashioned bottle uh, and what appears to be milk uh with a little twirly straw and she has a uh, flower in her ear kind of um and it's a starry night and she's sitting on a stump a, a tree stump uh and yeah i mean now that we know the the title being taking a break or uh mj said it in a way cooler language <laughs> voice um i mean it's kind of obvious that she's probably a wrestler Mm -hmm. and she just got done with her wrestling shift (laughs) or whatever or maybe just her maybe just her mandatory shift at the wrestling factory (laughs) yeah maybe just her mandatory 10 minute break from her (laughs) wrestling yeah her wrestling uh nine to five and so she is drinking probably what appears to be milk but most likely has extra protein let's keep it pg (laughs) and uh and uh steroids uh, and then because, r- as we all know, wrestlers are on the juice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, now that MJ's gone, we could really rip it up. Yeah, by the way, I don't know if you guys know, but MJ just went to the restroom, so we'll just continue <laughs> talking while she does that. Um, and, yeah, so she's on her break drinking the juice. Uh, her hands are uh, clasping onto it pretty... I actually really enjoy how the hands look. Mm-hmm. Um one thing I will say is that MJ paints very specifically in a way that her being pretty much self-taught uh, is kind of her, you know, I mean, I'm sure other people paint like her, uh, but uh, one of the things I'm always uh, interested in is how MJ is going to tackle certain uh, problems where she's like, I'm going to do this. I'm like, all right <laughs> and uh she she's pretty fearless with it yeah um and sometimes it works out and other times she's like i it's horrible yeah and, well this um, painting was uh most of the time when i have something do i'm painting till the day before we have to turn it in which mm-hmm. is as we case. are <laughs> yeah which is the case with this piece so i was up um till like three or four in the morning trying right. to finish this painting mm-hmm. and then i don't know how long do you think it took uh, to, oh, I don't know how long it and took, and I was cozy I was in my bed. Finish it, and I think I was like, "Oh, I'm done." And I went and grabbed Josh, and I was like, "What do you think?" And he's like, "No, no, 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 no." And then he like painted over the flower I was painting, and then I just like had to start the no, flower that's not over. This one. It wasn't this one. No, that was a previous one. Oh well, but he you, did that before, but it, there, <laughs> he did. We did something to this painting where I was like painting late. It was the jeans. You had issues with the jeans, I think. 
there was something. I yeah. can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the advantage of having a an artist couple. Mm. So when you're having trouble with something, you can bounce stuff off of each other. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hope you marry a lawyer so you never get help. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, Hashtag goals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't mind this piece. I just um, I actually one, really like it. It's yeah. like one of my more uh, one of the paintings I really like that you did. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, um, it's just like the lucha mask isn't my. I I wouldn't paint that out of my free will. It was for right. a show. It's, but right. I feel like it would have. Been, I mean, it's interesting. Like I like it. Um, right. So we. we I like were, the tone of of the mask. How you actually didn't paint it. It's a uh, like you just use the negative space of of the sky around her yeah. face to make and the it's shape like wood of the grain. Yeah, pulling through a little bit from mm-hmm. the from the wood panel underneath. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a really cool graphic element that that yeah. makes it more interesting. And that was one of the last minute decisions too. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, you can you just, just ran out of time. <laughs> it's like, you can just use the wood grain. It looks good that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it does. And I think it would, yeah. it's better than if you would have painted it in because the yeah. mask MJ used was the black yeah. mask and oh, it yeah. would not have been good to paint that with the dark background. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, and the model you used was also a, uh, just a random person that we saw at a bakery we were at. Uh, <laughs> shout out oh, to Peyton. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we were like, oh, she would be awesome to paint. Yeah. And I don't think she's done any modeling, at least n- no professional modeling, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure of. Uh, and we, MJ reached out to her, yeah. which is very awkward to do. Yeah, it was to super people. awkward. Um, and yeah, we were able to work with her and we yeah. Done a couple of paintings of her, yeah. which I'm pretty happy with. I've, oh, really? All mm-hmm. my paintings, all my favorite paintings have been of Peyton. Mm-hmm. She has like really expressive eyes. Like mm. there's yeah. something about her eyes that's just amazing to paint. Like yeah. it's just like the best eyes. But yeah. Um, yeah, there's been two times that I've approached somebody in person to mm. ask them if we could paint them, and it's worked fifty percent of the time. <laughs> 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 Uh, the second time was really awkward and you know we saw that girl she was at the uh legion of honor forgot to was she to you, yeah. <laughs> i didn't know the notice. second girl the girl that we saw that one day that said no to us yeah she's dead to me that's what <laughs> i didn't notice she's dead to me uh but yeah like sorry you're not klimp so you can't paint me <laughs> Yeah. Uh, she was too hipster, so she'd probably even say no to Glimp. She'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I kinda, had, I'm kind of a foodie. So she could so. brag later, like, well, she had like, I rejected Glimp. Yeah. yeah. She had like a patch that said anarchy on it, so I don't know if she would have. Oh, been. quick to judge? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't know if my work would like speak to her. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, anyway. Maybe you need to paint like babies dead in the street. Maybe something like that, yeah. Something like that, or... The government toppling over. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, I do. I, this is one of my better pieces that, or one of my favorite pieces, because that doesn't always happen. Like, as an artist, like, I paint something, and I'm like, oh, that was that. Right. And then I move <laughs> on to the next. But there's always, like, a small group of paintings, and I'm like, oh, that one was actually pretty cool. Yeah. I nice. think that's all you can wish for, kind of, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're painting... This is like uh, the mediocre, and then you just hope you know, to, to have one, one really one, good yeah. painting every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think me. if you're trying to get better as an artist, the shelf life of satisfaction for your own pieces is so short. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And there does, for mm-hmm. me, there definitely seems to be a, like a few paintings I did that I'm still satisfied with mm-hmm. now, even if mm-hmm. I don't think they're technically as good as I could do them now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I look back at them and I don't know what it is, but maybe it just reminds me of how happy I was when I first did it. Mm, yeah. But there's a small amount of paintings that I really think I did well. And um, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's been a huge jump to just moving to our li- like models, working with models. Like I like almost every painting I've done, I've been like really happy with yeah, so me too. far mm. because it's been something that you like, I'm seeing the painting as we're taking these pictures 
Right. So it's like extra exciting because I'm like, oh, this is going to be an awesome painting. You know, like I'm so yeah. excited to paint that. And it, it's yeah. not happening with every single one, but I'm definitely a lot happier with this group of pieces that have been from our references versus yeah. like before, trying to search for a reference. Before we were mm. using just references we found online. Mm-hmm. Right. And like uh, altering them ourselves. And, yeah. And now we're working from model, which is just so much better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The problem is that I would find a model that I loved, but now it's like, there's certain mod like there's this one model her name is nat weaves uh-huh. and she's like my muse like <laughs> i would i could paint her for the rest of my life and like be perfectly fine with it but i thought i was your muse <laughs> how dare you <laughs> but it's just like a matter of You're trying to spiritual work muse <laughs> yeah, i'm her spirit animal. trying to like get it right josh <laughs> trying to find uh, girls that i really want to work with you know yeah yeah but but I've been really. But the we've reason been, why you don't work with her, I missed that, was because. Oh she well, was, she's from the Bay Area, but she lives in L.A. right now, oh. so it's just like trying to schedule that. But so you are trying seems, to work with. Yeah, her. she seems down, okay. nice. so I'm super excited. But it's That's just awesome. a matter of trying to get their scheduling correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then but when you work with her, just make sure to take like a, a billion bajillion pictures, just I would a probably, lifetime yeah. work. Yeah, pictures. yeah. <laughs> just like shoot for like six hours. Yeah, that's kind but, of what we did the last. Our last shoot, we our shot last two for shoots. An, yeah, for almost an entire day. Yeah, but I've, we've got so many good pictures, yeah. and we've been really lucky. Like all the girls we've worked with have been wonderful. Like we always talk about that. Like yeah. up until this point, like all the girls, because I remember listening. Knock to on a, wood. Yeah, I remember listening to a podcast by. Uh, How's your I experience think, been, Sergio? By the way, with models. with models, have you ever had a bad experience? Um, I've had experiences that didn't work out, but I don't think I've ever had one that was bad. Where they were like, uh, where's my, um, water at room temperature? (laughs) (laughs) Um, the only thing that comes to mind in recent memory, uh, the poor model I found out later on was like dealing with like pretty serious illness. Oh. And so like she, and she'd been traveling model. She'd like travel like internationally in the bay area and uh it just uh i had an idea for it that she just didn't quite execute the way i wanted it to so i kind of scrapped the whole um shoot and never did anything Mm -hmm. with it Mm -hmm. but uh in a different capacity i'd love to work with her again okay good thing we didn't talk for like 10 minutes (laughs) so sorry guys um um mj we're so we're recording in our house um, me, mine and MJ's, MJ's and I's. Humble abode. Uh, and uh, her sister came by, so we had to pause it real quick. Um, but her sister we're... just doesn't even care about our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but we're moving on to some guy. Oh yeah, so we were talking about models. Sorry guys, um, <laughs> yeah. we're just gonna pretty much cut that short. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so one of the things we want to do in our podcast, uh, when we have something that's interesting in the art world or, you know, just the world in general, we want to just touch on it, give our take on, on it, give our opinion. And so one of the things I came across was on Facebook, uh, just scrolling through my feed. So there was this asshole in the Nashville area. Well, I mean, <laughs> in your opinion. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll let people come to their own conclusion. Who knows? Maybe they're a hero to somebody. This guy named uh, Blake Austin Hughes. Basically, he posted something on Reddit. Apparently, I had no idea that this was something that existed. There's a r slash shoplifting where people talk about when they steal shit from... Um, places yeah from stores mostly like i don't know sounded like people go to walmart and all that and so this is what this dude posted the other night i went to an underground art show and stole five paintings straight from the wall just walked out like i owned them i guess everyone assumed i did or that i bought them scanned them in and now i'm selling prints for like 50 bucks each it's super easy to get out of places like that with a shit ton worth of goods just gotta look as weird as whoever painted that shit (laughs) And so people heard, saw that. Um, well, we were trying to talk about that earlier and the fact that, like, I've never gotten any paintings stolen. I've gotten, like, paintings disrespected where they've come back, like, scratched or frames broken, but I've never right. gotten anything stolen from me. Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, I've gotten a sketchbook. I've actually gotten two sketchbooks stolen, but 
one was returned to me i think like three or four years later mm. <clears throat> um and then the other one uh was stolen and some little kids got it hmm. and uh this is kind of when i was doing graffiti more often and uh i you know when you're in the graffiti world you kind of it's kind of like skateboarding where you're, there's a huge range of age groups that do mm-hmm. it and the people that are really into it kind of uh so you end up hanging out with like 15 year olds to like 30 year olds mm-hmm. or you know 35 year olds or whatever it is mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh so you have the young kids that did graffiti at the time they they were like oh we know who took it and i was trying to have them get it back for me but uh it just never worked out, and I wasn't willing to go beat up some young kids. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have you ever gotten anything stolen through you? Um, yeah, from a gallery. From um, uh, actually, the gallery I show out in Duncan's Mills. Apparently, there's a. Uh, I did a small little landscape, and they, I guess, there wasn't there was only one person working there at the time, and he got distracted, and so somebody just you know grabbed it off the wall. Made Lucky. off with it. Yeah. It's horrible. I, yeah. That's like a that should be like a bucket list thing <laughs> to yeah. have your homework stolen. It's I so wonder, good. Someone's willing to steal it. You know what's yeah. crazy though is like okay, you catch the guy and he's like, yeah, well, I stole him. Like, does he go to jail for like how long would he get Life? arrested for? You know, electric like, chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He goes to art jail for. Uh, yeah. One. One. Um. Uh, I mean, one thing I will say though is um. When when I was also also when I was in the graffiti world, um, you steal all of your art supplies pretty mm-hmm. much because mm-hmm. the amount of stuff you're doing would cost a fortune to do, mm-hmm. and that's kind of. I but mean, it's not the same as stealing some yeah, of the artwork that they spent time. Yeah, I just figured I'd mention it because we're kind of right. talking shit about a guy. Stealing yeah, you are shit. kind of a bit more in a gray area. you so, where you come from, at least for in that. me. Yeah, exactly. It's it's kind of this weird thing where, uh, you, you know, it's, it's like you you justify it or have your own code of right. of ethics. Okay. So yeah. you say like I'm willing to steal from Walmart or right. yeah. whatever. Home well, it's Depot. interesting you bring that up because back to to what this guy is saying. Apparently, uh, on the original Reddit post I got from, even people, other people who post on that, and I assume are also shoplifters, they're like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty low. Like, yeah. like yeah. even for, even all of us scumbags think you're even bigger <laughs> scumbag than we yeah. are. And so yeah. he tried, and he did try to write, write something really stupid sort of justification about what he said. It was like, um, he said something like, you know, anybody who goes to that type of art show is is uh, making way more money and is in the bourgeoisie. So fuck them and like, uh, mm, like right. if you're able to even put your art on the wall, you're you're making money. It's like so well, not, not true. true. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, so what we should beg to differ. His punishment. Um, well, that's kind of a uh, story that's still going on right now. If if you read the article. Uh, he, they talk about how people found out who this guy was because on Reddit mm-hmm. you're anonymous, like you just have your screen name. But people found out about this guy, and he's kind of like a notorious piece of shit around people who know him. Like mm. he, like um, there was another Reddit post where they found out it's the same guy who leaked a bunch of photos of some girl he was either dating or somebody he was trying to hook up with somebody that mm. tried to put nude photos all over the internet of this mm. guy and so a lot of people don't like him right and so they found out that it was him who posted it but the interesting how old is this guy does it i don't know he probably he looks to be in his mid-20s i, I don't know much about him yeah he's super photogenic <laughs> yeah he and looks like kind of a hipster type dude. Yeah, he probably takes pictures of his food a lot. <laughs> hey, I take pictures. Yeah, so people found him. <laughs> I guess that's a picture of, of him looking at the art. I don't know. That mm. We have uh, located. Those paintings are pretty big. I uh, know. How do yeah. I mean, well, that's the thing. thing. People to... found out that like it might have been he just made up the story because people were saying like we don't know if anything was stolen. Mm. Like we tried to go into the. Thing, like they Wait, tried to cross so are reference. You telling me that people lie on the, <laughs> on internet. the internet. Huh. But 
Yeah, apparently they found out who this guy was. They they're looking for him, and he deleted his posts from Why Reddit post and everything. Why post things on the internet about doing crime in the first place? I mean, what's the point of that? It, you always hear about people posting stupid things like, "Oh, I robbed this person, and they're flashing money or whatever." And you're like, "Oh, you are the stupidest criminal." Oh yeah, they get called the time people posting yeah. cash and guns and everything. It's like, "Oh yeah, yeah. I bet those aren't registered guns." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so bad. People are <laughs> not the smartest criminals. I miss <laughs> the days of smart criminals. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was the days before the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when they People were, were probably just as stupid. They just didn't have a way to to criminalize themselves so easily. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that was so our people. Yeah, people pretty quickly found out about this guy because the um, the artist who posted about this is a Nash is an artist who lives in Nashville. And I think his punishment they should cut his hands off. Mm, I mean, go straight up Sharia law, on him. and he's he doesn't need to go to jail mm. or anything. Just <laughs> no hands. Yeah. Seriously. No eye, so he can't look at the art he stole. Yeah. <laughs> or what would hurt him really bad is no internet for no internet for a access. month. Yeah. <laughs> like no, nope, take my hands. <laughs> no. <Nope>, yeah. <laughs> Please take my hands. You can never post on Reddit again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I guess uh, what do you guys have coming up uh, this week? Are you guys got anything fun and exciting? Well, I have. I'm going to start planning for our show. In also, April. it's ML. I'm Martin Luther King. Mm-hmm. This day. Mm-hmm. So you got any you got anything I going work. on for that? No, work. Oh, how about you, Sergio? I'm how gonna you go high Martin five a black person. Oh, that's that's edgy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't got anything planned, and I don't want to have work. Don't you? Know, you? I don't know. In the I'm, studio, I'm, I'm getting that. over a cold. So I might have to call in sick on mm. Monday. I'm really excited to start painting again. We yeah, haven't me too. been able because we've mm. had like shoots after shoot after shoot set up. So it's been like then the holidays. I haven't sat down and done like a painting in like probably two months. Yeah. Like I've done little studies and little drawings, but I haven't done like a full on painting since yeah. Modern Eden. So the last thing I painted was an old Michael Jackson. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which uh, it was creepy. It, mm, some people said it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's your opinion that it was creepy. Most of the world thought it was beautiful mm-hmm. and super cool. I'm just happy it's how many Instagram house. likes did it get? That's what really matters. <laughs> um, I don't know, a million, a billion. <laughs> Who's keeping track of that? <laughs> uh, but it, yeah, so I'm definitely. Ready to get back in the studio. I have mm. a bunch of ideas I want to put in paint. Uh, so. I want to try and figure nice. out because we're doing. Uh, so Eden from Wonderland is calling it like a solo show, but basically we just get a wall. But uh-huh. I want to try and mm. do some sort of like installation, like hmm. surrounding my artwork. Because yeah. I've never done that. I've never done I, an installation. With I think I'll do it work. too, but no. I'll just what I'll do is I'll just build like walls around my art so that it makes it its own little gallery. <laughs> so it is a real solo show, ah. and no one is invited. That's a part of the other show. <laughs> you got to be on the list, <laughs> and the actually you got to not be on the list. And the list is just gonna have the artists that are in the other the, the walls. <laughs> that's really that's, mean. that's how petty I am. <laughs> Uh, also, back to the guy, uh, Blake Austin, Hughes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rob, is that his? No, that's what he did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is an action. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the um, one thing I wanted to mention, though, was he said it's super easy to steal from art shows, but... I don't agree Depends with on that. on the art show, yeah. yeah I was going to say, like, if some, if I saw someone walking out with artwork, I mean, I'm a pretty big guy, and <laughs> I would probably have to go fisticuffs with this guy. I don't know if I <laughs> used that right. Uh, also, I got a lot of artist friends that seem crazy as hell. Mm-hmm. And uh, not the not the stere- stereotypical, I don't know why that sounds wrong. I'm, stereotypical. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stereotypical, uh, yeah, my brain's half on, <laughs> uh, you know, idea of what an artist is. 
Mm-hmm. I think Which well, is, most people probably think they're the guys are manorexic and um, <laughs> and made of sponge, <laughs> but that's not true. Didn't didn't Edina say that somebody stole pieces from her gallery? Some like I know that people have stole stolen like clothes and stuff, but mm-hmm. I have a feeling that someone stole like paintings from her as well. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember that. A couple of years ago. It's entirely possible. Yeah. I mean, but the problem is, is uh, who are you going to sell that to? And like, what's the right. reason? Well, yeah. Why would you sell? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Like this guy's saying he's scanning them and make it, selling Making prints. prints. Yeah. It's like highly <laughs> unlikely. I mean. Right. Yeah. Who's he selling them to? Is he, is he shipping them out somewhere else or else? Everybody in Nashville would, yeah, under a different name, and they're selling it under a different name. I oh, huh. highly doubt it. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense. It's not easy to sell prints on Instagram in general. If you're the artist, let alone if you just started a random page to sell prints. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to work that well. Plus, it's right. work to sell prints, so you stole something to work towards yeah. selling. <laughs> yeah, know, that's like, true. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like I'm going to steal this. So I can go work. Yeah, it's I just know. kind of silly. Yeah. He might have just been a troll, like, yeah. trying to, like, get attention. Like, I stole Possibly. this shovel. Now I'm digging huge holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cool. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm mowing people's... I stole this lawnmower. Now I'm mowing people's lawn for $10. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, why didn't you steal a car? <laughs> Something I stole worth money. this artwork so I can start a very small, unprofitable business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, black guy doesn't seem like the smartest. Yeah. 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 Scumbag. So we'll call this a probably a quits. We're we're pretty much we're done. done with the podcast. I we're mean, MJ, do you want to, to promote about. any social media or anything like that? Well, if your, you're your, not your YouTube. <laughs> yeah, my YouTube is uh, MJ Lindo Art, and. I think that's about it. That's the only yeah. thing I would really, unless you want to check out my Patreon page, which would be much appreciated. Well, I mean, you could say your Instagram is MJ Lindo, and mm-hmm. if you get any followers from here on out, that's because of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All my future successes. Yeah, of this and your private page is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, you can follow our dog at Mobile Moves Marshmallow. Mm, yeah. I mean, when he's a guest, he can promote himself. <laughs> <laughs> Future guest. Yeah. Know. He's got yeah. a lot to say. I don't yeah. know. He's going to be a nail biter. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is he's going to bite his nails. <laughs> I know. I want to know how he got to his current style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeroopy. And his 6,000 followers. Wow. Uh, no need to bring that up. Mm-hmm. I mean. <laughs> A little modesty. <laughs> never, never heard. How does he use Instagram with his big paws? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how does he reply in English? <laughs> I know Mello dog. really well, and he does not speak English. <laughs> <laughs> he knows a couple words. He understands a couple words, but... neo Mastiffs uh, are a smart breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they are. <laughs> uh, but, you got any more to add to this? this yeah. Uh, um, I don't, I'm not sure how you, listener, found our uh, podcast, but... We worked pretty hard this week to get ourselves on all the different avenues that you find yeah, podcasts Sergio. on. <laughs> yeah, <Thanks Sergio. laughs> thank you, Sergio. I was <laughs> trying to be humble about it. But okay, <laughs> take that. Um, yeah, so now we're on iTunes. Hopefully, oh. so and then um, uh-huh. the other day we got approved to be on Google Play, so we found uh, mm-hmm. we're on there. Yeah, we don't and play. <laughs> Bad joke again. I'm killing it with these bad jokes. <laughs> that was a courtesy laugh I gave you. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're also on Stitcher. Uh, we tried to look into getting ourselves on Spotify, but it's kind of weird. You have to uh, send like an email to the people who who run Spotify, apparently, and you have to wait till you get approved, and you don't know when you get approved, so. But have um, you already gone and done that? Yeah, I did that. So it said it could take as long as two weeks. So Well, yeah. our friend Clay, one of the models we work with, is on Spotify. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean it's possible. Well, once yeah. it shows up, um, I'll blast it out there yep, on our yep. social media. So yeah, follow us on Instagram at waiting to dry. Yep. We just started a um a Facebook page also, waiting to dry. All across all social media 
And yep. we only have one like on there so far, and, I, and that's me. So <laughs> other people should. I mean, I'm holding out to see what the content <laughs> is before I like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like things willy-nilly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I have like four like four things I like on Facebook. It's like uh, great artwork and Ricky mm-hmm. Martin and, you know, things of quality. <laughs> Martin Luther the King. But only for this week. So, and yeah. like only, after. only till Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. So like waiting to dry and like Fabio with his wispy hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being our first guest. Yay. And surely Yay. we will force you to be on it later Thank on. Thank you, when Aaron, we run for out being a. Uh, <laughs> we have a for being uh, silent. Uh, audience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> our first live our audience. Our live audience. <laughs> <laughs> um. And uh, yeah, until uh, next Friday. Do you have anything else? I mean, um, I'm just working in a studio, so yeah, just follow me on Instagram. Yeah. Keep up with that. Yeah, and, yeah. Don't steal art, kids. It's <laughs> not cool. Act like Martin Luther the King. It's very bad for your karma. Con. <laughs> I can't think right now. <laughs> like uh, the content of your character, <laughs> you know that whole thing. <laughs> And this and, podcast uh, should have ended 10 seconds ago. Yeah, so get the hell out of here. <laughs> also, Shoo! make sure you follow my podcast on Harry Potter. Yeah. That comes out. Mm, never going to happen. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.